Well, we're glad that you're part of SETV. Once again, welcome to SE News. This is the weekly edition where we give you a 360 comprehensive extension of stories that have made headlines in the week. We have lots of them in tonight's newscast, but first, let's take a look at those that are headlining this particular edition. Headlines. Bobby Wine withdraws electoral petition against Museven from the Supreme Court. Comesa and Ethiopia sign a sub-delegation agreement. Sudanese Central Bank announces a currency crisis and IMF intervenes to stabilize Sudanese pound. Once again, we're glad that you're keeping it as E News. And my name is Patrick Seremba. We have lots of stories in this newscast, but now let's get started with our headlining story. Well, National Unity Platform Chief Robert Chagulain Sentamu has withdrawn his election petition challenging President Yoweri Museveni's triumph in the recently concluded general elections in January. He made this affirmation on Monday, 22nd of February, in a press conference at his offices in Kamocha. Let's take a look at that report. Bobby Wine lost to Museveni in last month's election and rejected the results saying there was widespread rigging that included retaking of ballots, falsifying results on tally sheets, intimidating his agents and other irregularities. On the 2nd of February 2021, Bobby Wine opted to file election petition protesting Museveni's win. It was clearly discriminatory of the Supreme Court to reject an amendment to our petition, yet an amendment was accepted in the recent um, the presidential election petition. As if that was not enough, ladies and gentlemen, our lawyers put it to the Supreme Court. They explained to the Supreme Court that we were unable to put all our grounds together because time was not enough, having uh, noted that the military and police took away 11 days from our time. The Supreme Court, with a clearly biased attitude, rejected our amendment. Bobby Wine said they have opted to do away with their case from the Supreme Court and they shall take the matter to the Court of Public Opinion due to the fact that they have realized they stood no chance of succeeding in a court that looks compromised by the incumbent. We are withdrawing from the Supreme Court because the courts have failed to show that they are independent. The courts are not independent. It is clear that these people are working for Mr. Museveni, and we refuse to be part of that mockery to justice. We have told you before, and we tell you again, that we are going to take this matter to the court of the people. He further said that Museveni, like Museveni, sought to challenge the victory of Obote in 1980 and later withdrew the case and chose to go to the bush. They too have also sought the same and since the circumstances are not any different. In contrary to Museveni's actions, he was not seeking a violent end to means. They are peaceful and they shall not use any violence. Bias Chifiji reporting for SA News. Well, in other stories, due to the failure of Ugandans to implement the coronavirus guidelines, including CAFU, Assistant Inspector General of Police Edward Ochiom has said that criminality has shot high in the cities, especially in the night hours. Well, Afandi Ochom said they have information that indicates that bars and discotheques are operating and they're being protected by security officials that allow them to operate despite the fact that the directive is against this very same action. Our reporter Dorothy filed this report and now let's take a look. In a message dated 22nd February 2021, Ochom said that the continued activities of border border riders and motor vehicle drivers not observing the 9 p.m. curfew time has paved way for crimes to go sky high. It has amplified cases of domestic violence. It has increased murders and robberies. 
AIGP Achom said it is high time police commanders intensify operations to have captive on violators of the guidelines as one of the way to ensure crimes reduce. He further directed the police to straighten away to straight away put into action the COVID-19 regulations, have instant checks to regulate movement during a few times and strengthen food in motorized patrols. Ruth Akampura reporting for SA News. Well, in other business stories, on Monday 22nd of February 2021, Ethiopia's State Minister of Trade and Industry, His Excellency Ambassador Ms. Maganu Aga and Commissar Secretary Commissar Secretary General Ms. Chileshe Kampwempwe signed a sub-delegation agreement. Well, this agreement is to ensure that all borders are assisted to become more efficient and they operate smoothly to make sure that they deepen the trade which will lead to enhanced regional integration. Our reporter Patrick filed that report and now he does report. Commissar? and Ethiopia signed a sub-delegation project worth 5.6 million euros in order to improve coordinated border management, trade and transport facilitation at the Moyal and Galafi border posts. European Union, under the Commercial Trade Facilitation Program, will be funding the project and the construction of the main building of the one-stop border post at the Ethiopian Galafi border post. To achieve from a regional integration point of view, we want to support transfer, economic transformation of these countries so that we want to support you know, the value chain so that we're, we're talking to each other. We're saying if I produce something which will start in one country, another piece is added in another country and ultimately we are all connected. The Ethiopian government will proceed with the implementation of the sub-delegation agreement which includes managing contracts, supplies and services, while Comesa will provide technical guidance. The State Minister appreciated the European Union for the support and also thanked Comesa Secretary General and her staff for the technical support rendered during the development of Ethiopia's project. Patrick Seremba, reporting for SE News. Well, UNIS Environmental Hub, a global social business network that creates solutions for environmental crisis, has launched its Grow Up Incubator. Well, the incubator aims at supporting and growing skills of early stage entrepreneurs that have showed consistency in the field of waste management and they have proven their concept to be working. Well, this will be helping entrepreneurs grow and able and be able to scale their businesses and become more self-reliant. Let's take a look at that report. Its Grow Up Incubator program, UNIS Environmental Hub, has opened their call for application for social business entrepreneurs that are beyond testing stage with an impactful solution for sustainable waste management, have a product or service on the market, for six months to three years and accumulated sales of approximately 10,000 to 25,000 US dollars to date. In addition to social business entrepreneurs, UNIS Environment Hub are looking for mentors, professions who have experience in the East African context, preferably in waste management and in entrepreneurship or early stage business development. The call for application for both mentors and social business entrepreneurs is open until the 21st of March 2021. For more information about the Grow Up, join their info session event on the 4th of March at 6.30 p.m. East African time and the link to the registration form could be found in their LinkedIn profile of UNES Environment Hub. Sheila Karunji reporting for SETV News. Well, with that particular story, we take a very short commercial break and we do return with what's happening in international news. We have sport, so just stay with us. Don't move a muscle.
We're glad that you're still watching SE News and thank you so much for joining us for our second segment. Here we look at what's happening in the international scene. We look at the continent Africa and also beyond. But in Africa, well, Sudanese pound is to be devalued. Well, on Sunday, 21st of February 2021, Sudanese Central Bank announced a sharp process. Well, Sudan is expected to devalue its Sudanese pound against all other currencies and this is to be able to attract more money into the economy in the attempt to stabilize their economy. Our reporter Dorothy filed this report and now she does bring us up to speed. The economy has been starved of foreign exchange and massive inflation since the Sudan succeeded in 2011, taking with it more than half of the public revenues and 95% of exports. This included oil resources, the biggest export earner leaving Sudan in a sharp economic crisis. International, Mon International Monetary Fund has asked Sudan to liberalize its currency. The measure was loudly demanded by the other donor community as a whole. Well. The Sudanese economy could no longer live in the monetary lie with an official rate of the pound six times lower than the black market rate. Jibril Ibrahim, Sudanese finance master, said the move is intended to increase foreign relief, limit smuggling, attract foreign investments, and reduce cash shortages in the economy. This comes after the central bank of the Carlton has announced that the value of the Sudanese pound will be dependent on the market rates. Dorothy Akampura reporting for SE News. Well, in other business news on the continent Africa, we look at Nigeria. Well, last December, Africa's wealthiest country, Nigeria, passed a 35.66 billion US dollar budget for the year 2021. Recently, their finance minister, Zainab Ahmed, said that Nigeria intends to borrow from domestic and foreign resources, mounting to a tune of 14.69 billion US dollars. Our reporter, Pius, did file that report. Nigeria's president, Muhammadu Buhari, signed on the country's 2021 budget, which is expected to be higher by 20% from the previously one. This comes as the largest oil producer in the sub-Saharan Africa has been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. The different projects are expected to be concessioned or sold between January 2021 and November 2022. A number of properties have already been listed for sale or concession and they include the Abuja Environmental Protection Board, the Abuja International Conference Center, some unnamed refineries, the transmission company of Nigeria, and many more. While some will be in the form of a share sales, other transfers may vary in terms of core investor sales. Some will undergo concession, while others will be commercialized fully or partially. Investor can be individuals, firms, Nigerians, or foreign nationals said the Nigeria's Bureau of Public Enterprise. For SETV News, I am Pius Chifiji. Well, in other international stories, we look at Tesla and other big giant companies after they accepted Bitcoin as a payment method. And this has shown a sharp use in the use of the Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin has hit a new record of over 58,000 US dollars last week, and the cryptocurrency continues to rise to more than 90% in its usage. And this will push it to the market value of about 1 trillion US dollars. Let's take a look at that report. Bitcoin has respectively advanced from 40,000 US dollar mark in early January to 50,000 dollars in early Feb. It has continued its upward momentum, breaking through $58,000 on Sunday. The Bitcoin usage has been largely spurred 
owned by a well-known companies, adopting it as a method of payment. Elon Musk revealed that last week that his car maker Tesla had bought 1.5 billion US dollar worth of Bitcoin and would be accepting it as payment for its cars in future. Other giant companies like Apple, Mastercard, BlackRock, among others, have portrayed interest and plans to accept certain cryptocurrencies as a form of payment as they set to embrace digital currencies and other fintech services. Sheila Karunji reporting for SETV Business News. Well, with that particular international story, we also have interest to see how other currencies are faring in the country. And let's take a look into what's happening in the money markets. We take a short break and we also do return with sport. Do not move a muscle. Our dear viewers, from wherever you're catching us from, this is SETV Africa, and here is SE Sport. My name is Pius Chifiji, and now we begin off with KCCA that smashed uh, Maida FC 5-0. The Kampala Capital City Authority Football Club showcased a convincing performance that was rejected in the 5 nil drabbling of Malaba Youth Development Association at the MTN Omondi Stadium in Lugogo, Kampala. Let's take a look at more of this story with Sheila Karunji. Moses Ari Ariro scored the opening goal in the fifth minute after being set up by Luanga as the first half ended on a 1-0 in the favor of the host. In this game, Charles Luanga and Bright Anukuni also scored a brass for the 13th time Uganda Premier League champions. KCCA ended their winless run for the much-needed victory that takes them to 13 points from 8 matches. The Kasasiro boys also climbed to 7th position on the log with 13 points with Maida remains winless from the last played eight matches. KCCA FC has last won a league match on the 11th of December 2020 when they beat Mbarara City 2-0 at home. Sheila Karunji reporting for SETV Sport. And now let's move on with the Uganda Hippos that qualified for the quarter finals. The Uganda Hippos came from a goal down to beat host Mauritania on a 2-1 to qualify for quarterfinals of a youth football continental championship. And this in turn sealed a last eight bath at the tournament. Let's take a look at this story with Dorothy Akampurira. Sili Singali gave the tournament host a 39-minute lead before KCCA FC youngster Steven Serada equalized later in the second half in the 59th minute to give the Hippos great hope. Uganda will now wait for the final group games in the other pools to know their quarterfinal opponents. Here is the head coach, Uganda Hippos reacting on, on a qualifying to AFCON under 2020 quarterfinals. First half on the wedding to Gamba Basami of the play fire, Sambu Pia, Mixer Jafu Jakuja, 
Bana bali bafu ya mikisa. Kala bengi chumu tituchi wayo kutu wa kadi kuta ngendele wabi ya fumangeli. Dorothy Akampura reporting for SE Sport. And next, we move to Rwanda, Chigali, where the FIFA Regional Development Offices were just inaugurated. And in 2017, FIFA took the decision to establish FIFA Regional Development Offices around the globe in order to better serve its member associations and to be closer to their needs. The long-term development of football in East Africa received a substantial boost with the inauguration of a new FIFA Regional Development Office in Chigali. Now, this marks Rwanda as the third country in Africa to host the FIFA Development Offices, and this is after Senegal and South Africa. Let's take a look at this story with Patrick Soremba. This followed a signature and opening ceremony that included FIFA President Gianni Infantino, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation from Rwanda, Vincent Biruta, plus the Rwandan Minister of Sports, Arore Mimosa Onyanganju. Other football dignitaries that were also in attendance included the President of the Central Africa Football Association, Sekafa, Wallace Karia, Celestine Yaninji, President of the Central African Republic Football Association and President of FOFA Members Association from the region. Patrick Seremba reporting for SE Sport. And lastly here with the local sport, we look at Nabugabo Triathlon and Duathlon that was registered as success. This being the fifth edition of the Nabugabo Triathlon and Duathlon, this event happened on Sunday, the 21st of February 2021, and it gathered both local and international players in biking, swimming, and running competitions. And this makes it one of the unique games in Uganda that has just come on board. And here we bring you more of what happened from uh, Nabugabo grounds, and we have interactions with most of the participants, and here is what they have to say. My name is Anna Chitiwa, and I participated in the duathlon. My name is, is Robert, Robert Katz. It's always nice to be in this environment, and combined with sports activities, it's just amazing here. Hi, my name is Bernie Weiler, I'm from the U.S. Uh, it's a, there's so many people participating, um, and all, everybody having a lot of fun, and really enjoying themselves, every age. Uh, so probably that that's the, the best part of all this and being out in this beautiful location. Amanya gange yenze kato Paul nga kusi tuva kusaza masaka cycling club or masaka cycling team muzanyo guno kute na mbe mwira nechida wane wamba nga chafurema. All right, thank you very much for having me on your show. My name is Justice Kojo and I'm the CEO to the Ultimate Group of Companies. Absolutely, so such events for sure in the next five years and keep in mind there's been a lot of growth for us this year but in the next five years I see more locals participating. Obviously as you saw there's a lot of uh, expatriates and um, Europeans, Americans, North Americans would like to see more Ugandans participating because I can tell you that not many Ugandans swam but with the younger the youngsters that went in swimming basically are 13, 14, 15. And that inspires us that for the next generations to come, we are going to see more Ugandans enjoying swimming and hence participating in events like this that require swimming. Well, we appreciate all your time you spare to have with us here at SETV Africa. My name is Bias Chifiji, and now we turn back to Patrick Seremba with a wrap-up of this news edition. Well, we're glad that you have been with us from when we started this particular news bulletin. And thank you to Pius for bringing us up to speed with what's happening in the world of sports. To those that have been watching us across all our social media platforms, do not forget to follow us. We are at SETV Africa. Each and every week, we give you reliable news that has made headlines across the world. My name is Patrick Seremba, and from the entire news crew, we say it's a good night and catch us again next Friday at 6 p.m.